Good afternoon, dear professors and colleagues. I'm Dr. Zhao Hui Wang from the Cardiology Department of Union Hospital, Huazhong University of Science and Technology, Wuhan, Hubei Province. It's my pleasure to be here to make a presentation of the topic Diagnosis of COVID-19. As you know, Wuhan was once the epicenter of the epidemic, and the West Division of our Union Hospital is the designated hospital for COVID-19. And we have treated at least 1,600 patients with COVID-19. I hope my sharing will be helpful to you. My presentation is mainly based on the trial version 7 of Diagnosis and Treatment Protocol for Novel Coronavirus Pneumonia, which is released by Chinese National Health Commission and State Administration of Traditional Chinese Medicine on March 3, 2020. In China, we also named COVID-19 as Novel Coronavirus Pneumonia, that's NCP for short. Okay, let's review the clinical characteristics of novel coronavirus pneumonia briefly. Based on the current epidemiological investigation, the incubation period varies from 1 to 14 days, mostly 3 to 7 days. The main manifestations include fever, fatigue, and dry cough, and a small number of patients have diarrhea. Severe cases mostly developed dyspnea and or hypoxemia after one week. However, clinical manifestations are only suggestive. In order to confirm the diagnosis, we must rely on some laboratory tests. Initially, there are general findings with laboratory tests in NCP patients such as peripheral white blood cell count is normal or decreased, and it's common to find decreased lymphocyte count. Liver enzymes, lactate dehydrogenase, muscle enzymes, and myoglobin are found slightly increased in some patients, but elevated CRP and ESR are common in most patients. Procalcitonin is normal. Elevated troponin, the dimer, and inflammatory factors such as EO6 is seen in some severe and critically ill patients. General findings above are not decisive in diagnosing COVID-19, but they can give us some clues about diagnosis and sometimes useful for prognosis. For example, we found that consistent high D-dimer and EO6 levels indicate bad prognosis to some extent. The most crucial laboratory tests are pathogenic examinations. Novel coronavirus nuclear acid can be detected in nasopharyngeal swabs, sputum, lower respiratory tract secretions, and other specimens using RT-PCR and or next-generation sequencing methods is more accurate if specimens are collected from lower respiratory tract, such as sputum or L tract extraction. But sputum is not common in COVID-19 except for in combination with bacterial infection. However, there is often the case that the SARS-CoV-2 RNA was only detected in 63% of nasopharyngeal swabs, according to Chinese researchers' reports. To deal with such situations, serological detection for IgM and IgG was introduced in trial version 7. NCP can be confirmed with positive IgM or IgG in zero of suspect cases. NCP 
virus specific IgM becomes detectable around three to five days after onset. IgG reaches a titration of at least a full fold increase during convalescence compared with the acute phase. Apart from laboratory tests, chest imaging can also be helpful. From CT scan, we can find several abnormalities below. In the early stage, imaging shows multiple small patchy shadows and interstitial changes apparent in the outer lateral zone of lungs. As the disease progresses, multiple ground glass opacities and infiltration in both lungs are found. In severe cases, pulmonary consolidation may occur while pleural effusion is rare. Chest radiographs are of little diagnostic value in early stages, but CT findings may be present even before symptom onset. Here, I would like to show you some CT imaging manifestations in different stages of COVID-19. Firstly, during the ultra-early stage, ultra-early stage here means asymptomatic, one to two weeks after exposure. Only small patchy shadow was found in posterior segment of left superior lobe. Look here, here, and here. Secondly, in the early stage of the disease, early stage here means early symptomatic presentation. As is shown in this slide, the CT imaging was from a patient on the fifth day of the illness. We can see typical ground glass opacification mainly in posterior segment of left superior lobe. Thirdly, in progressive stage, long windows showed bilateral multi-lobar ground glass opacifications with subplural distribution and consolidative opacities superimposed on ground glass opacifications. Mediastinal window showed a very small amount of plural effusion which is not common in NCP patients. In severe stage, diffuse lesions in bilateral lungs were found. Almost all lobes and segments got involved except for left upper posterior segment. We can see multiple pulmonary consolidation in combination with ground glass opacifications. We also call it white lung. Actually, white lung, this term is came from chest x-ray, but in CT scan, we still call it white lung. Lastly, the upper panel showed us multiple ground glass opacifications in progressive stage. And in the lower panel, we found exudative lesions were obviously absorbed, especially this part. So, after I introduce laboratory tests, then let's move on to the case definitions. Individuals with epidemiological history and clinical manifestations such as fever, fatigue, and dry cough are regarded as suspect cases. Epidemiological history refers to these two conditions. One, in contact with novel coronavirus infected people with positive results for the nucleic acid test within 14 days prior to the onset of the disease. Two, in contact with patients who have fever, 
or respiratory symptoms from communities. Well, confirmed cases have been reported within 14 days before the onset of the disease. Suspect cases with one of the following etiological or serological evidences are considered confirmed cases. First, real-time fluorescent RT-PCR indicates positive for new coronavirus nuclear acid. Second, viral gene sequence is highly homologous to known new coronaviruses. Third, NCP virus specific IgM and IgG are detectable in serum. NCP virus specific IgG is detectable or reaches a titration of at least a four fold increase during convalescence compared with the acute phase. From this trial, version 7, we have learned that both RT PCR screening and viral specific antibodies are now considered the standard for diagnosis of COVID 19 in China. Clinically, we also meet some patients with asymptomatic infection. How do we find out these kinds of patients? In general, asymptomatic infected patients always have close contact with confirmed patients. Accordingly, those individuals with epidemiological history are recommended to have a CT scan or virus nucleic acid detection. And finally, early warnings for severe and critical patients should be paid much attention to. They are the peripheral blood lymphocytes decrease progressively. Peripheral blood inflammatory factors such as EU6 and CRP increase progressively and kept in high level. Lactate increases progressively. The dimer level remains high. Lung lesions develop rapidly in a short period of time. Okay, that's the main content I would like to share with you guys. At last, I sincerely hope the epidemic in Italy could be controlled as soon as possible. That's all. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you.